After Jesus meets with the seven disciples in John 21 and has breakfast with them on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, they go up to a mountain somewhere in the Galilee area where they receive the Great Commission that we read about over in Matthew 28. And then following that, they head back to Jerusalem and they're in that area for a couple of weeks before Jesus ascends from the Mount of Olives. And so just a little over a month after his crucifixion, they're back in the area where that whole thing took place. Barry, we've arrived, top of the Mount of Olives. We're talking about the Ascension, and there's a passage that you like to read. I think the best text to look at is actually from Luke, the 24th chapter. In verse 50 it says, When he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him to return to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple blessing God. Now, they've just come down from Galilee, and they have some questions about the nature of the kingdom. Is Jesus going to restore the kingdom? Right. It's really easy from this spot to imagine them standing here. They're at the top of the mountain. There's a part of me that wants to imagine it in the garden where he prayed because he had a habit of going there and he was known for going there to pray. So there's a part of me that wants to romanticize that and think that that's where it is. But either way, no matter where it was, as he went up into the sky and was taken from their sight, as they turned, they would have seen all of Jerusalem laid out before them. I wonder if they had thoughts running through their head about just a month and a half ago, this is where the triumphal entry took place. Just 40 days ago, he was in a tomb on the other side of town. Just so much has happened. It's been an intense three and a half years. Jesus starts ascending up into the sky. And what Acts records for us, it has more detail about the ascension. It tells us that Jesus goes up, he goes beyond their sight behind a cloud, and a couple of angels appear to them and ask them, why do you stand here looking off into heaven? Now that was a really natural thing for them to have done. I can imagine myself right. gazing off, trying to figure out where he went, and is he coming back down anytime soon? They let him know that Jesus will come back in a similar manner. He's coming back in judgment. While they're waiting for him, they're told to go back into Jerusalem and wait for the day of Pentecost when they would receive the promised Holy Spirit. Right. There was a part of them that probably wondered, what now? Not only had they been given the Great Commission, but they'd also been promised a comforter, someone that would come and help them in all this. I'm sure they were confused because their concept of the nature of Jesus' kingdom has been shaken a couple of different times. And we know that they were asking him about that during that stop on the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said, it's not for you to know when I'm going to restore my kingdom. Go back to Jerusalem and wait. I think there was a transformation of the disciples going on during this period. And then, of course, when you look a little further ahead into the book of Acts, you really see it, especially after the day of Pentecost. But I'm sure this was a period of a lot of questions, but a period of looking forward to the future because everything Jesus had told them over the last three years had come true. During the triumphal entry, they were excited. They thought that the kingdom was imminent, and so they would have been riding this incredible high. They didn't understand that Jesus was going to go through what he went through. They weren't anticipating that, even though he had warned them several times. They've just had all of these ups and downs. And so I just kind of picture this moment that's recorded over in Acts chapter 1, where they've kind of steadied themselves. I don't think they're as overconfident necessarily as they had been at the triumphal entry. They're still excited. They're still hopeful. There's just this quiet peace about them as they wait to see what Jesus is going to do next. I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This was only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support.